this is Ms. DB, and in this video we are going to look at how to simplify square roots. So you can use a calculator to estimate the value of a square root and get a close answer, but we're going to mostly be simplifying square roots. So be careful that you know the difference in the directions. So there's some different uh, things we have to think about when we are working with square roots on the computer. So you can find a square root symbol it doesn't put the bar over the top like this, but it's pretty good. It's like this right here. So to find that, you go to Insert, and then Symbols, way over here. It's usually one of first, the first things that comes up when you click on Symbol. Like on mine, it comes right here. If it's not there, it's a little tricky to find, honestly. Um, once you have one of them, though, you can also copy and paste that symbol whenever you need it. So that's one way to write a square root. Another way to write a square root is to use an equation. Insert, and then it's usually close to the symbols thing. Sometimes it has its own, depending on how wide your window is, it has its own picture up here. And you can get really nice square roots if you want to insert the equation. There. So here's the equation box, and then it gives you all these extra tools up here that you don't normally see. And one of them is called radical, and radical is another name for square root. And the one that we need for square root is just this one here, the first one. And then you would type, if you're trying to type the square root of 40, you would just put the 40 underneath there. And that gives you a really nice square root. But it's a little bit more work, so you don't have to do that if you don't want to. And then the final option for square root is you would just type SQRT, which is the abbreviation for square root, and then you put the number after it. So those are some options for that. All right, so a radical expression is, that's another name for square root, is radical. Radical is what we are doing to it. And the expression under the radical sign is the radicand. The square root is the radical sign. It's in simplest form if the radicand has no perfect square factors other than one, the radicand has no fractions, and there are no square roots in the denominator. That's when it's simplest form. So we need to simplify our, fract our radicals to make sure they're like that. And we do that using the product property of square roots, which says that if you have the square root of a number, you can break it into the square root of its factors. So, for example, let's look at the square root of 50. The square root of 50 is the same as the square root of 25 times 2 because 50 is 25 times 2. You can use the product property to break this into this, square root of 25 times square root of 2. And we would do that because we know the square root of 25. The square root of 25 is 2, so you just go ahead and write that the square root of 25 is 5, you cannot simplify the square root of 2, so you just write it next to it, and that is your answer. That is the simplest form of the square root of 50. If you have a fraction, there is a quotient property that says you can break that into two square roots divided by each other. So the square root of 3 cannot be simplified. It's not a perfect square. But the square root of 49 is the same as 7, so this is as simple as it gets. So most of your answers for these first parts of the problems, 1 through 11, will have, most of them will still have square roots in them. When we are simplifying, we are going to look for factors of the number that are perfect squares. So let's look at the perfect squares. The first perfect square is 1. That doesn't help us much because 1 is a factor of anything. So the square root of 1 is equal to 1. 2. 2 squared is equal to 4. The square root of 4 is equal to 2. Uh, 3 squared is the next one. That's 9. And the square root of 9 is equal to 3. So you would look for these numbers as factors. And all the way up to 100, you should have these memorized. And the square root of 25, I'll just write the squares. Square root is 25. Square root of 36. Square root of 49. Square root of 64, and the square root of 81, and of course the square root of 
100 would be 10. I can get that in there. So look for these numbers as factors of the number that you're trying to simplify and then rewrite it as a product of those factors and then take the square root of each of those factors. The square root of 25 is a perfect square so that one will just be plain old 5. You will not write the square root of 5, it'll just be 5. There's a few of them like that scattered throughout. Let's look at number 4, the square root of 200. So I want to rewrite 200 as something times something. So try to think about what times what equals 200. I'm going to do it over here because I'm not sure which ones I want to do yet. Well, 20 times 10 is 200, but neither 20 nope, or 10 show up on this list over here that I made of perfect squares. There's no 20 and there's no 10. So think of another set of factors that would equal 200. How about 100 times 2? Well, there's a perfect square right there. The square root of 100 is 10. The square root of 100 is 10. So that's a good one to use. So I want to rewrite 200 as 100 times 2. Now your next step is to rewrite this as two square roots times each other. Square root of 100 times the square root of 2. And the reason we do that is because we know what the square root of 100 is. The square root of 100 is 10. So I'm going to simplify that part to 10. I cannot simplify the square root of 2, so I just rewrite it, and that is my answer. Like I said, many of these you will still have a square root in your answer. All of them except maybe that square root of 25, that first one. Square root of 50 was one of the example problems, so you can look back. Let's look at 11. We can use the quotient property to rewrite this as the square root of 2 over the square root of 16. I already told you a couple times, square root of 2 cannot be simplified, so we just rewrite that. How about the square root of 16? Is that a perfect square? It is a perfect square. The square root of 16 is just 4, so you put just put a 4 down here. This cannot be simplified anymore. You can't cancel through a square root, so you would just leave that as that. Now, after you get good at simplifying square roots, then we let you get the calculator out and find the decimal approximation of a few of them using a calculator. So I probably don't need to give you much assistance with that, but the square root of 99, depending on your calculator, you either hit the 99 first and then the square root sign, or the square root sign and then the 99, and then you just have to write, it says two decimal places, so this would be 9.9 5 because the number after the 4 is a 9. So you look at the digit after the second place and if it's 5 or greater you round this up. If you're not sure how to round correctly then write out enough digits until you don't have a number greater than 5 after it. Like you go all the way out to here 9.94987. Otherwise just round correctly. Okay then the last section you are just going to Classify numbers as rational or irrational. Square roots that cannot be, that are not perfect squares, are irrational numbers. Square root of 2, square root of 5, square root of 3, square root of 7. These are all irrational numbers. Square root of 9, however, we can simplify it first, and that's 3. So 3 is a natural number, a whole number, it's an integer, it's a rational number, it's a real number. They're all real numbers that we're working with. So simplify the square root first and then decide what it is. Don't just look at it and say they're all irrational because they're all square roots. For example, 24. We've done square root of 25. You know what it simplifies to. So it's just 5, so it's going to be like this one. It's going to be lots of different things. It, once you simplify it, if there's still a square root in it, then it's irrational. So number 23 is the square root of 20, and that's one of the ones that you have to simplify up here. See? Square root of 20 and the square root of 20. So let's look at that and see if that will be a perfect square or if it will have a square root, and if it has a square root it'll be irrational. So the square root of 20, we have to write it as what times what equals 20. Fat two numbers that multiply together, and one of them needs to be a perfect square. Neither of these are perfect squared. Alright, how about 4 times 5. 
4 is a perfect square. So I'm going to rewrite 20 as, I'm going to rewrite the square root of 20 as the square root of 4 times 5. If you can, put the perfect square first, like I've been doing. And I can rewrite that using the product property as the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. Both of them still have square roots. But I know what the square root of 4 is because the square root of 4 is one of those that I listed as a perfect square. Square root of 4 is equal to 2. So when I see square root of 4, I'm going to replace it with 2. The square root of 5 is not a perfect square. It's not on that list, so I leave it as 2 times the square root of 5. Now I check if it's rational or irrational. Well, the square root of 5 is one that I gave as an example as being an irrational number. So 2 times an irrational number is still an irrational number. So 23 is irrational. So if you take the square root of it and you get a, a whole number, then it won't be irrational, it'll be rational. And then the very last one, you are going to place the numbers in numerical order from lowest to highest. And I would say this is probably the easiest to do if you write them each as a decimal number first. So go ahead and use your calculator and take the square root of 6 and then divide it by 2. And then take 61 divided by 50 and the square root of 1. Point. So get them all as decimals and then write them in order from least to greatest. Just make sure when you write them in order that you go back to these numbers and not your decimal numbers because I won't know which one is which then. All right, so... Good luck with this, and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much.